Ha ha! We're recording. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing awesome. I know we're in the right group. Let me get my stuff on the side. I made a little outline so I won't have to ramble on <laughs> like last time. I apologize for that. Okay, let me make sure I'm live on the app. So much easier there. Happy Friday the 13th, by the way. <laughs> Ugh, it makes me sad because um, my husband loves The Evil Within. He needs to finish the first game, and I wanted to get it for him today because it starts, uh, it's up today. Okay, I'm live. Cool beans. So, <laughs> give it a couple minutes. Make sure people can get here. But again, hope everyone's doing awesome. Okay. So, today is going to be fun. <laughs> and you'll notice in the group, um, especially when it comes to learning to read Taro, uh, I get very theatrical. And that's because I have a degree in theater. I am a theater nerd. I hung out at the theater. I ate there. I slept there. <laughs> I'm a theater nerd. So learning taro in a theatrical way like we we're gonna go over today really really helped me um and it made things awesome and so much easier to deal with say hello if you come into the chat i shall see you on the ipod let's put this up over here make it easier cool so today we're going over the idea of a protagonist versus an antagonist. Oh, hang on. Hello, Tammy. It would help me if the <laughs> headset was plugged into the right device. That should be so much easier to hear me now. Oh, and really quick. Ah, I keep stalling. So sorry. I had my tea here. And it's green, so it's only supposed to steep for two minutes. And that was going to be a disaster if I was <laughs> talking for a good 30 minutes or so, and it was going to be steeped for that long. <sighs> Hello! Yay! So, today, we're going over protagonist versus antagonist with tarot readings. And it's so much easier to go this route when it comes to shadow work, because nobody is the good guy. Well, like, we are humans. We have two sides of the same coin. Hello, Katrina. I saw you come in. Um, we flip-flop all the time. We're not 100% good, not 100% evil. Same thing with magic, same th with everything. There's always a different side to the story. And the idea here, Tammy says, glad I got in the door to watch you. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad you got in the door too. This is gonna be awesome. Um, so let's get this idea in your head. So let's say you're driving home from work and someone rear-ends you. Automatically you're going to be like, holy crap, this guy's an asshole. He just rear-ended me. What in the world? And maybe in his mind he was like, you were going way too slow. And it was an accident. He honestly didn't mean to. You were just going so slow and he was trying to speed, like trying to slow down that he accidentally rear-ended you. You get out the car. Both of you are automatically gunning for the other person. Because <laughs> you're like, you're an asshole, you hit me. You're an asshole, you're going too slow. So, and you're hitting heads already. But in your minds, you're the good guy. The other person did you wrong. And we have this outlook with a lot of things in life. It's not my fault. It's this person's fault. Or it's not my fault. You know, this thing was in the way. <laughs> things like that. And that's just a self-preservation type of attitude. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, except for, you know, when it gets in our own way and we refuse to take responsibility for anything. But when it's more about... When, we say, when it's more about, you know, seeing something from the other person's perspective, it can really change things up for you. So, 
that's the idea that I'm going with here is in Taro and in our lives we are our protagonists we are the heroes protagonist doesn't have to be the hero but we're the heroes of our own story it's our life we see it through our perspective the antagonist isn't necessarily the villain but it's somebody that creates opposition for the protagonist and this is just through literature through theatrics movies anything there's always something in opposition the protagonist can be a person but the antagonist doesn't have to be a person it can be I be an idea so or like a physical object so the antagonist could be money for you or a roadblock like a literal roadblock things like that it's just something that's in opposition to you and not all the time is the antagonist the bad guy they can be an anti-hero they can have good reasons from their side of the story for doing something so I'm gonna be giving some examples here hello faith <laughs> thank you for joining us um, I'm gonna be giving some examples here so for my husband is a huge comic book nerd and he'll go off on tangents about different things that happen in comics one of his favorite villains is Dr. Doom Victor Von Doom if you've seen the Fantastic Four movies I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I love, but Victor Von Doom in the first one with Chris uh, Hemsworth, Chris Pratt. Ah, there's too many Chris's with um, J Lo. No, yeah, J Lo with her. It was he was fantastic. I loved him, but in the new one he was shit. <laughs> he was horrible. Horrible rendition. And there is a comic where Victor Von Doom, in his full form, gets taken to like this area for like time traveling. And he finds out, out of all the supervillains in, you know, the Marvel Universe, I believe Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom is Marvel, all the villains in the universe, the world in the universe would succeed and live on the best and not be destroyed if he were to take over. So he finds out if I take over and I rule everything, everyone's get everyone gets to live, including myself, which is what I want. <laughs> so he goes and he does it. He takes over the world. And from the superheroes, their standpoint, they're like, no, Victor Von Doom is at it again and he's horrible and we can't let him do this. But he's like, guys, <laughs> I talked to the time travel people. <laughs> It's from my perspective, I'm doing the correct thing. Their perspective, he's being an even evil villain again. You see what I mean? So if we were to do a tar reading over this, we're like, okay, we see from his point of view, his energy, he's not lying about this. He's He doesn't have anything, you know, negative going on with him. He's He's not being manipulative at all. He honestly believes this is the right choice. Just like the heroes are not being manipulative, they think that it's honestly the right choice to stop him. And then it clashes, and that's how we get a really good comic in a fight. So, that's just one example with protagonist antagonist. Another one that might be a little bit more well known, everybody's heard of Romeo and Juliet. Everybody has, even though Shakespeare never considered it a romance or a love story because it was a tragedy, it's the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, but everybody knows it. Everybody knows about Mercutio and Tybalt, especially if you've seen West Side Story. Um, this would be Bernardo, would be Tybalt, and Tony would be Romeo. They are in opposition to each other. Tybalt, from his point of view, he's like, the Montague fami family are a bunch of assholes. We have this feud for a reason. Bernardo's point of view, if you watch West Side Story, I am protecting my sister. We are here from Puerto Rico, we've been treated like outsiders, and here comes this guy. Hello, Vanessa! Here comes this guy that all of a sudden wants to take my sister away. And I don't trust white folks, basically. <laughs> from his point of view, <laughs> that's what happens. Tony, or Romeo, from his point of view, I'm in love with this girl. Love. <laughs> I'm in love with this girl. I don't mean any harm, because I'm not racist. 
even though my family was brought up, you know, if you're going off the original story, Capulets hate Montagues, understand that. I don't care what she is, I just love her. Tony, I'm here to stop a fight. And that's what he literally does. He comes literally to the rumble to stop the fight. What happens? Tibble, or Bernardo, gets killed. Him and the guy who plays Marcuccio gets killed. So, from both of their standpoints, they were doing the right thing. Self-preservation. Keep your clans on your sides. But when someone tries to bridge that gap, like Tony was trying to do, just talk it out, then things end in violence. And that's how, you know, you get conflict in the story progressing. So, again, if we saw this from Ataro's standpoint, their energy is awesome. Both of them feel they're in the right. They're not seeing the negative that's happening. So what do we do as tarot readers when it comes to shadow work like this? We see things from a third person perspective. And that's my favorite part about tarot. We get to see things from, it's like God mode in The Sims 4. <laughs> or in The Sims Medieval, where literally you're just watching the characters interact. And we get to see everything that happens. And with shadow work, we see that about ourselves. We have it in front of us as, okay, this is what I think is going on, and this is the obstacle, this is my antagonist in my way. Why don't I want to acknowledge it originally? Okay, we pull a card for that. Why don't I want to change anything about it? Or what is keeping me from changing about it? Maybe there's a sub-protagonist. And then things take on a much clearer perspective. Yes. We have emotional ties when it's ourselves, or we wouldn't, we do a reading for somebody else. But at the same time, it's so much easier because you get this third person perspective. Then you're like, okay, if I was just a bystander, this is what I would see. And it makes working on yourself, digging out all the little nooks and crannies and things that you don't like about, her, about yourself so much easier. Because you're like, okay, it's tangible. I can fix it. It's so much simpler than I thought it would be. So, it also works with the idea, and it, with dramatic irony. Now, if you don't know anything about, you know, literature and English and writing books and writing plays and things like that, there's this idea of dramatic irony. That is when something happens that the main character, the protagonist, does not know. Something happens on stage or in a movie. And we're watching and we're like, oh, oh no. Or <laughs> things like that. You're just like, oh, you bitch. Things like that. Those little moments where you're, someone has this soliloquy and goes on for five minutes about something that the main character doesn't know. And then you're like, ooh, things are getting good because that's going to come out and it's going to be amazing. Tar readers, we have this same idea. Only it's kind of like <laughs> psychic uh, dramatic irony. <laughs> Where it's more, we see how things will potentially play out. We can see if we continue on this path, this is what's going to happen. If I remove this block in this shadow work reading, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be so much easier, you know? So, some tangible, well not tangible, some examples of dramatic irony. For example, if anybody knows of the story of Macbeth, um, or the Scottish play. <laughs> Ghosts and superstition and things. I don't really care. Um, basically, this guy is told by these witches that he will become the king of Scotland. He goes to kill the king, he becomes king, and then because it's a tragedy and it's against divine intervention, the, everybody doesn't like it and he dies by the end. Um, and life is restored back to its balance. And you can see everywhere in the small details that he's not supposed to be king. <laughs> um, because literally as soon as he kills the rightful king, the atmosphere gets dark and the birds start cawing and, you know, there's dead animals on the side of the road, nothing grows there anymore. It's all those little points in your life like you're in a bad relationship but you don't quite see it because you're in the relationship. But he's emotionally abusive, you stop talking to your friends, you can't do the things that you used to do or love to do, 
and, and things get really slowed down. You can't see it happening because you're in the situation. But from the audience perspective, from the tarot reader perspective, doing the spread on it, you're like, okay, it's coming. <laughs> and one part of it, uh, Lady Macbeth, who didn't kill the king, this is Macbeth's wife, he didn't kill the king, but she got the guards drunk and planted the murder weapon on them so they'd make it seem like the soldier did it while he was drunk. She felt so bad because the king looked like her father, she started losing her goddamn mind and hallucinating that there was blood on her hands and she kills herself. Macbeth doesn't know this. <laughs> He's off to the side so you're like, oh god, his plan is falling apart because his wife is now dead. Yeah. <laughs> we can see that from our perspective. But the protagonist doesn't know it. You know? And that's where it comes in handy with a tarot reading. And that's what we're going to do with this workshop. We're going to take a look at our lives from the audience's perspective. From our perspective as a tarot reader, we're going to take a look at everything going on. What's wrong? And it's going to give some isolation for it. It's going to be hard, and it's going to be painful. <laughs> Because shadow re shadow readings have a habit of talking about things that we don't like. But it's going to come in handy so much. And it's going to give kind of this catharsis kind of thing. Release. You're going to walk away, probably crying a little bit. But it's going to be a release. Like, yes, this energy block is finally gone and I can move on and become an amazing reader. Because now this block is, it's gone. So, one thing that I did is I took the time to go ahead and on my website, which I can actually get the straight up link for it, I have an article called Overcoming Writer's Block with Tarot. Because I used to use this to write plays a lot. Overcoming Writer's Block with Tarot. And what I used to do is use this spread that's on there. If you want to open it up in a side tab and take a look at it, oh, it actually shows up in the thumbnail. There's a little spread there. I use it all the time for making plays in college because Taro is based off of theatrical events. It's based off of different situations. So. I went ahead and did this and so we can practice a little bit on what I mean by seeing things from a protagonist antagonist perspective and see how they play together to create a story that is our lives. Okay? Because theater and books and literature is all based on real life. Art is based on life. So, aha! First one. Sorry for, you know, text being all wobbly. I'm not sure how to fix that yet. I'm going to fix it though. Um, I did this from my new Halloween Oracle deck, you know, because it's all shadow worky. So, in the protagonist slot, we have the jack o' lantern, antagonist, the skull of flowers, um, what did this say? Conflict is the spider, and the twist is the skull of darkness. So, let's take a look at this from a tarot reading perspective. This is a story, this is somebody's life that's playing out here. So. In their situation, they're the jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns were a symbol of protection. They would keep fae and goblins away and keep people from getting killed. So they are a protector. They like safety. They don't... They're very much an earth sign. Stable. They're probably me. They're, they're a Taurus. <laughs> they don't like moving um, and going where there is uncertainty. So that's the protagonist. Antagonist is the skull of flowers. So the idea of rising from the ashes. Things have been burnt down to the ground. You need to bloom and change and make way for new life. You see how the jack-o'-lantern and the skull of flowers would not get along. Jack-o'-lantern is like, I'm staying in place. I don't want to fucking move. You're crazy. Skull of flowers, yes, you have to. Things have burned down. You can't stay in the stability you thought you had anymore. You have to leave. What's popping into my mind right now? <laughs> um, ah. Uh, I'm full of stories and stuff. Um, Fiddler on the Roof, if you've ever seen it. Um, it's about this village in Russia of all these Jewish people. And the main char character, Tevia, literally, the first song of the musical is Tradition. Tradition! Yeah, he doesn't like 
differing from tradition. And throughout the story, he um, has to vary from his tradition. His daughter doesn't want to marry the guy he picked out, so he allows her to marry somebody else. Um, his second daughter wants to marry a, like, this revolutionist, like, he's, they're both still Jewish, but he's, he doesn't have a job. He can't support her. And she even goes to him in Siberia when he gets put in jail. He allows it because he loves his daughters. His third one, he can't forgive because she marries a Catholic. He's like, that's my limit. And the whole village, because of the Catholics and the Russian uh, government at the time, has to uh, leave their village. So this is an example of that. They're literally ashes of the village. It's not what it used to be, so the people who want stability and tradition have to be pushed out. That's an example. Faith, I'm sorry I have to duck out and grab kids. I hope to watch the rest later. Thank you for your time. Super welcome, Faith! This will be up. It'll... I'll also send this out to the newsletter. If you're a part of the Taro and T newsletter, I send out replays. And they're on YouTube. <laughs> so plenty of places for you to watch it. Don't worry about it. Thank you for showing up. Um, so there we have our antagonist and our protagonist. You see how they differ. So, a conflict, the webs we weave with the spider. You laid your own ground already. Like, there's nothing that you can really... Once a web is made from a spider, that's where they've been. That's kind of like them leaving their mark. It's not them staying to catch food. Um, at least from my arachnophobic husband who does all kinds of research on this mess. Um, it is how they get food, but it's more the web is there after they've moved on. They've marked their territory with the web. So the conflict is leaving your... like creating a home for yourself, but then having to move on from it. The twist is the skull of darkness. So we all have parts of ourselves that we don't want to acknowledge. We don't like to admit things about ourselves. And the hardest thing is those little pieces of ourselves, those shadow parts of ourselves coming to light and everybody seeing who we really are. It's super hard for some people. It, it, a lot of people, it's really, really hard for. So, this story, it's hard for... I find that interesting. The jack-o'-lantern is all about light and protection, because literally the light would ward off the spirits. The twist is it has to go into the darkness. You have to put out the candle sometimes. And you have to immerse yourself in the darkness, otherwise you can't fully move on. So the person who would get this reading would be really, really stuck in their ways. They're very much a traditionals. And it would be hard for them to do shadow work. And it would be hard for them to move on from their stability, their comfort zone, and reveal to the world that things really have burned to the ground. You know? <laughs> Does that make any sense? If you have questions as we go along, feel free to go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer. But yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this one's from the Witch's Tarot. Again, sorry for the blurriness. <laughs> Again, I don't know why it's there. So, in the protagonist, this one kind of gives a little bit more of a story. The other one was hard. Like, let me bring it back up for a second. The other one was a little hard. Because when it comes to also characterization in Tarot, I look at the direction the cards are facing. All these cards are facing outward, because this deck is specifically, I feel, for shadow work. It's all introspective. When a character in the deck is looking straight out and looking at you, it's saying you need to do something internally. All these cards that I got for the Witch's Tarot are external, you know? And how can I tell this? The chariot is facing not toward me. It's facing to the side. Same thing with the hermit. It's facing toward the side, and actually, if you look at them, they're facing each other. Both the Six of Swords and the Ten of Cups are have their backs to me. So this tells me something it's external that you're having issues with. So, the Chariot is our protagonist. Move fast. Hippolytus is popping in my head. Can't stand Hippolytus. 
uh, if you know Greek um, mythology, he's an asshole who um, at first was worshipping Aphrodite and then was like, screw you, I'm going to Artemis because I'm a hunter and she's more amazing and Aphrodite was typical Aphrodite and he's like, no, you're being rude to me so I'm going to make your stepmom fall in lust with you. <laughs> and the story goes downhill from there. So, um, hello Lynn! Thank you for coming in! We're going over protagonists and antagonists. We're going to do an example with, um, The Witch's Taro here. I put a link to the spread so you guys can see it. It's a little bit up. So, the chariot is our protagonist here. Fast moving, fast paced, he knows where he wants to go. Lots of energy, he'd be fire and air if we're going with um, elemental Ill energy, moving forward. Um, antagonist is the hermit. That makes sense. <laughs> you have two major arcana energies that are opposing each other. So the chariot wants to move fast. The hermit wants to sit still <laughs> and be introspective and take his time. He's not exactly in the environment to move fast. The chariot is up in the clouds with the air. There's nothing blocking him up there. The hermit is kind of standing on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> Lynn says, I am the hermit. <laughs> Good. You're introspective. You'll, you're the antagonist in this situation, then. So you're not the bad guy. You're just an opposition force to someone who is the chariot. So you guys are arguing constantly about where to move next. Are we moving forward? Or are we staying and thinking about it for a little while? This is... You know, like being on a car trip was like, we should stop for the directions. No, we should just keep going. No, directions. No, keep going. <laughs> that kind of back and forth. So, what is the conflict? The Six of Swords. It can be an easygoing trip if you guys would actually communicate. <laughs> if you talk to each other, it would be so much easier to talk and like get to where your destination is. That's the goal, but it's not very easygoing. You know? <laughs> so, what's the twist here? You guys are the Ten of Cups. You enjoy the hap- like, the arguing. <laughs> it's kind of like the odd couple. In your chaos, you make happiness. Kind of thing. So, and there's emotional fulfillment there. This is like an opposite attract kind of relationship where you have someone very fast paced, another person a little bit more stable. You balance each other out. You teach each other the different values. So, <laughs> this would be the makings of a comedy right here. For real though. Like, do you guys have any questions about this? What's your take on them being protagonist, antagonist? Well, I have a sip of tea. staring at the comments. <laughs> Lynn says, I can see how that can happen. Yeah. And would you have understood this if you were either the chariot or the hermit in this situation? I don't think so. You'd be more focused on that asshole over there isn't doing what I want to do. Lynn says, we are often opposing. Yes, exactly. We find opposing opposition in our lives. But because we take it from the tarot reader's perspective, the third point of view, we see the dramatic irony. <laughs> and we see things going on that the characters in the situations themselves don't see. They're caught up in the moment, which is the goal for everybody <laughs> when it comes to acting. But they're caught up in their own situation, in their own lives. They don't care about what's going on over here. But because we see it from a third person perspective, it makes it so much easier to pick out the problem here. You guys have the same goal. You just have a communication issue. You need to get on the same page. You know? So it makes shadow work specifically, but tarot reading in general, so much easier when we get into it. Like when we actually take the time to sit down and get that third person perspective. And it really dulls the blow a little bit on what's wrong in the relationship or what's wrong going on with your career or with your kids or your spouse or whatever it is. Lynn says true, we're all caught up in our own stuff. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but it shows that not all the time are we the protagonists. We are the antagonists sometimes to the other person. And it's so much easier to do it with this because now if you think of a moment in your life where you felt wronged and you flip it to see the other person's perspective, then you can really level it out. So like for example, all the examples. Um, when I was pregnant, I was just in a really bad mood that day. <laughs> I was huge. I was ready for the baby to come out. It was hot. I was hungry. And we just got on wick and we were going to get food. So, there was this lady in the grocery store. You know how sometimes you go in the store and you feel like someone's stalking you? <laughs> because everywhere you turn in the aisles, <laughs> they're there. <laughs> this woman was like that. But she was an older woman. And nothing against older people or because sometimes younger people do this too but a lot of the times especially since I've worked in customer service they don't say their please and thank yous but they expect it from the other person so <laughs> I was trying to get a freaking mango <laughs> and this woman had her cart right up against it and everywhere I turned I'm a house <laughs> because I'm not a small lady, I'm a house, and she's right there and would not say excuse me. So I just screamed in her face, excuse you, grabbed it, and walked all the way across the store. And my husband's behind me like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> From my perspective, she's annoying as hell. From her perspective, I was the rude pregnant lady who decided to scream at her randomly. She might have not understood what was going on. She might have thought I was stalking her in the store. But, at the same time, I needed to see things from the other person's perspective. You know what I mean? And looking back on it now, it's funny. But at the moment, it was just like, why is this woman being so rude right now? You gotta see it from the other person's perspective. And I felt super bad afterwards, but she was gone, so I couldn't apologize. But take moments like that in your life. How could you have taken it from another perspective? How could you have taken that protagonist-antagonist approach? Because not every person on the planet is 100% good or innocent, and not every person is 100% bad. We all have a light and a shadow side. You know? Lynn says a pregnant woman could be a killer. I have, I was a huge house with my daughter and I had zero patience in what they, oh, I get pregnant again. It is, I'm not giving birth in the summer. <laughs> it better be December. I'm going to be mad. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> oh, and the birth was just fine. No pain. Like literally I had zero pain. <laughs> But no. Nope. I'm not going to be hot in the summer again and pregnant and carrying around a little person kicking my bladder. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hope everybody enjoyed today. Do you, does anybody have any questions about the workshop? I'm going to put the link to the workshop again. And not close. Ah. Don't freeze on me. There we go. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put the link right here again. Ha ha, there we go. And pin it for everybody. Um, oops. Nope. Don't unpin. There we go. <laughs> um, so if you haven't signed up for the workshop, make sure you do. You'll only get the little freebie, like the spread that I made that we're going to do, and the info on the scary cards of Taro and all of that fun stuff unless you sign up for the list. <laughs> You'll also get a replay that you can watch as many times as you absolutely want. So, it's going to be super awesome. Can't wait to see everybody there. Tammy says, I think as healers we should look and love our shadow. Exactly. Because why do you think you're a healer? We hear about the wounded healer aspect so much in our life that sometimes we really need to sit down and figure out why it is we do what we do. Like, I know why I focus so much on unblocking energy. 
because my energy was blocked for such a long time. And I focus a lot on healing from toxic relationships because I've had so many in my life. So it's reasons why I do this. So what we're going to figure out, all that stuff is going to come to light with this workshop. We're going to figure out what exactly is it about you that makes you the wounded healer that you are. And how can you use that to grow into yourself as a tarot reader, as a magical practitioner, as whatever you want to be, as a healer, as your own personal healer, an energy worker, how you can do that. And always feel free to share in the group. If you do this spread, <laughs> this plot, this plot protagonist conflict and twist spread, share it in the group. I'm happy to see. Let's all make our own little stories with this. This is going to be awesome. So, <laughs> Tammy says, I know what makes me a healer. Fantastic. I'm glad you do. <laughs> Lynn says, thank you and I will be there. Yay! Get people coming. We already have some people uh, that are coming like Lynn and it's going to be so fun. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, I will see you guys soon. If there's no questions, feel free to tag me if you have issues in the group. This is a tarot community, so bring your tea, bring your cards, and share your spreads and questions that you have. It's going to be amazing. So, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you so much for coming. This is amazing. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in next week's live stream again. I'm